It's Friday, the 3rd of September. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. We'll get a quick update on the Dixie Fire, talk a little bit more detailed information about that blowout that we were looking at yesterday on yesterday's briefing. We'll talk a little bit about the use of water scoopers, which are being used on Lake Davis in the Dixie Fire, and the difference and efficacy of water scoopers versus retardant dropping aircraft as another tool in the toolbox that firefighters can use. Let's look at yesterday's Zoom Earth satellite view to talk about the 24-hour burn cycle right now on these fires. When you start out first thing in the morning, before the sun comes up, you've got a nice inversion layer laying the smoke down, laying the fire down. When you have an inversion layer and when you have smoke and a over the top of a fire, it's like putting the lid on your cooker and it just slows the fire way down where making direct attack on the fire quite easily possible. But as the day wears on, especially when you've got just enough wind to and enough clear visibility to lift the inversion layer and get the smoke out of the way, once the smoke is up and off of the fire and the sun is on it, that fire is able to just take off like crazy during the daylight hours and that'll be right around here four five six in the evening until which time the sun's going down now about 7 30 in the evening here in northern california and the cycle begins to repeat itself now the past couple of days have been a prevailing wind out of the southwest resulting in red flag warnings but now those red flag warnings have been dropped and we're getting into a more of a confused wind pattern where uh, especially up there on the dixie fire you're going to see more winds out of the north and a little bit out of the east during the day of firefighting and those winds are going to com be competing with upsloping winds and on the west side of the mountains a little bit of a wind from the west and so right about where the fire is burning in the Dixie fire, it's going to be a bit of a confused mess as far as the winds go. And the fire itself may very well dictate the wind activity right over the fire. So here on the Dixie fire, we've got the two heads of the fire, which are at 60 miles apart. Cal fire is working this section of the fire up by the Lassen Volcanic National Park, and that's going to burn out eventually down towards Highway 44 here. And the Forest Service is working this this end of the fire, the south end or the east end, around Lake Davis here. And this is the part I want to talk about today. And remember, this section here is the Beckworth fire, which earned bur burned earlier this year and is, for all intents and purposes, out. But we had what we hoped was a pretty good containment line right along here across this valley just east of Lake Davis. But then it took off quite suddenly during the, that um, red flag warning westerly wind event the last couple of days and, and blasted all the way out to the escarpment. And right now the fire is just teetering on the edge of the escarpment right here. The escarpment is where the mountains drop off abruptly from the from the forest up here in the Plumas National Forest down to Highway 395 in the desert below. And firefighters want to try to keep this fire up on the escarpment because there is population down here along the 395 corridor that they want to protect. So this is where they the big uh, use of retardant dropping bombers was yesterday in an effort because of the steep and rockiness of this terrain, they got no other way of really securing a a line across this head of the fire but they were able to dump a ton thousands of gallons of retardant across the head of the fire here on the escarpment in an effort to try to stop this fire at the escarpment or at least what they would ideally like it to do is if it's going to come down the escarpment which historically it does there's very strong downdraft winds off of this escarpment they would like that to come down very similar to what happened over at Echo Summit on the Caldor fire. They would like it to come down gently in, in the night, if you will, and uh, be a much more manageable fire to where they could do direct attack on structure protection. They don't want it just blasting down the, uh, the escarpment during the afternoon with driven by the afternoon winds. So that's why they were dumping a whole lot of long-term effective retardant drops across the head of this fire here. Now, how did this fire come to escape out of here? Very interesting. Again, what I was saying about smoke and inversion layers, 
up until the last couple of days, this fire was burning actively back here to this side of Lake Davis. This area was putting out a lot of smoke, and this area here was putting out a lot of smoke, and that smoke was tending to keep this section of the, well, keep this section of the fire in an inversion, if you will, or it kept it, it kept the fire down. The smoke kept the fire down. Once the fire finally subsided in this section of the Dixie fire, that allowed the smoke to clear and the sun to get in here and come by the afternoon when that sun preheats the vegetation, the super dry vegetation in here, and the winds get to it. That's just like lifting the lid off the boiling pot of water and off to the races. This goes and blammo, within a day or so, this, this fire shot out all the way to the escarpment. Now let's zoom in a little closer here on the Lake Davis area. This ridge has a quite a bit of heat in it as well. And this is one of the few places where we've found the effective use for water scoopers, the CL-415 Bombardier water scooping aircraft as Lake Davis is located right here. And they're able to do a series of runs down off of Lake Davis and attack this fire right here along the ridge with the water scoopers. Now there's a lot of misconception Stand by, let me pull up the video on this. Here's some actual video of the scoopers working out of Lake Davis here recently. Now check out the, the crosswind drift on this base leg here. You got to be used to dealing with the winds when you're flying in these firefighting conditions, especially when you're scooping so close to the fire. So these scoopers can scoop up about 1,600 gallons of water in about 12 seconds. Once they smack it onto the lake here, they lower their little scoops and pick up that 1,600 gallons of water very quickly and then return to the fire and drop it. But there's a lot of misconceptions about the effective use of these water scoopers. As, and they work in formation tandem. This is pretty cool as well. Let me get myself out of the way there so you can see what I'm talking about. There you go. Since they are only dropping water, there is no long-term retardant capability with these aircraft. I mean, they can drop retardant, but since they're doing water operations right now, all they're dropping is water. Hey, look at that. Looks like he's doing a go-around. Good call. Go around and try it again. That's a heck of a crosswind there. So... Since they're not lo dropping long-term retardant, it's only water, the water evaporates very quickly, especially out west here. So what these aircraft are most effective for is like helicopters able to drop on, on uh, hot spots, quick uh, attack on hot spots in an effort to cool those hot spots before they grow very much bigger. Again, these aircraft can't really do direct attack on large flames, just the same as a fixed as a long-term retardant aircraft, <clears throat> because the large flames are simply too dangerous to fly uh, next to. So they can do spotting, hit hot spots with water, and cool those hot spots is about wh what they can do. Now, back when we were talking about trying to save the escarpment there. Over here on the escarpment, they need that long-term retardant to lay down there because the long-term retardant, the pink stuff, has got clay and fertilizers and remains very effective on the vegetation long after the moisture in the retardant evaporates. So a huge difference between a fire retardant aircraft and a water scooper as to how effective they are. And out west here, it's hard to find good practical applications for these water scoopers. But in the future, what are we going to do about these mega fires? How, well, the, the horse is out of the barn as far as forest management. Now, some people are finally getting it through their heads that really this is a forest management problem or a lack of forest management problem. But that that train has already left the building, and it's too late. Nature's going to take care of this now on her own. So your only other option is to, to, is to keep small fires small. you <coughs> you got to adopt a more of a, a, a Cal Fire philosophy of an aggressive initial attack to stop these wildfires in the first place.
which kind of goes back to <laughs> part of the problem that we've had over the last 50 years is when when fires were prevented from burning and and that allowed the the, the fuels to grow and to build so thickly so if you're going to keep small fires small how are you going to do that are we going to reconsider our aerial firefighting fleet are we really going to ramp up the size of our aerial firefighting fleet and adopt a more widespread policy with the u.s forest service of aggressive initial attack and keep small fires small that remains to be seen but that is one po short-term possibility we could employ in an effort to keep these mega fires from becoming mega fires in the first place. And along with forest management, more and more people are finally beginning to realize that prescribed burns is perhaps a good way of managing these forests. But unfortunately, one of the many problems here in California and other places, again, these are federal lands we're talking about. This is federal management problem in California, but however, it's often California laws get in the way of federal management and lawsuits spurned by environmental groups in California sp spurn the Forest Service from being able to take any action. Of course, the budget in the Forest Service as well. There's always money to fight the fire after the fact, but never enough money to prevent the fire through forest management practices in the first place. Regarding AQI, air quality index, when you're measuring the clean air of your state, uh, the AQI of forest fires does not count. However, the AQI of prescribed burns does count. This is just a perverse incentive to further prevent the proper use of prescribed burning and allow these <laughs> create help to create these huge wildfires with a with terrible air quality for not only California and Nevada, but the entire rest of the nation. So it's time to rethink a lot of these policies and procedures. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for your support on Patreon that makes this possible. See you here.